Hello everyone, Andy Schwab here with your Farm and Ranch News. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association held their annual summer conference business meeting in San Diego this week. NCBA affiliates and delegation from all over the Northern Ag Territory attended the meetings to represent the producers. For Montana Stock Growers Association, their main focus has been advancing that producer profitability message on a national stage. However, MSGA President John Grandy told me the plan of attack has shifted a little bit from pushing in the initiative as an NCBA policy to working it into the association's strategic plan. We decided what we do is just bring down a directive to keep working on those things and prioritize them. We did that. Actually, that directive has been tabled, and we have yet to find anybody down here that really says they're opposed to any of this. But how we go about it, how specifically people are thinking it would be better rather than passing it as a directive, we're starting here just in about an hour. We're going to be working on the new NCBA strategic plan. And a lot of folks thought that was the, the right area to put this, that it, it's going to carry more work wait and be more effective if we put this as a high priority in the NCBA strategic plan. Now Montana stock growers as we look uh, forward will be discussing their producer profitability during the producer forum in Billings on July 23rd and 24th with co-host U.S. Cattlemen's Association. Jumping from one coast to the other, Montana Farm Bureau Federation was busy in Washington, D.C. this week with their annual Council of Presidents. MFBF President Cindy Johnson told me that the event offered some great collaboration with delegates from outside the Western Congress, uh, Caucus, that is, who want to know what the issues we are facing. Very good to have folks who understand all the water issues and the endangered species and threatened species issues and the problems that we have with BLM because BLM is not an organization that plays in the East at all. So they really need and want to know what it's all about because those congressmen and senators are voting on issues relative to those agencies that deal with problems of the West, not problems of the East, but they have an equal vote. Johnson noted that hope for the farm bill progress getting done before elections is fading pretty rapidly. We need to take a break, but we'll be back here in a short bit to look over your ag markets. I wanted to put up a fence to protect my tomato plants. So I grabbed this and this, and then I did this. But instead of yielding a big crop, I hit a utility line and had to pay $1,200 in repairs. I didn't just lose my pride and joy. I could no longer afford the new stovetop I'd been saving up for. Next time, I'm going to make my free call to 811 before I dig. Learn from Curry and hundreds of others. Call 811 before you dig. Welcome back, friends. Here Ag News and your markets. I'm Andy Schwab. The USDA will release their latest monthly World Ag Supply and Demand Estimates report today. The reports will update balance sheets with new estimates from the June 28th acreage and grain stocks reports, including estimates for the ground that was not planted at the time of the June survey. Traders will have uh, likely the focus of the lost interest by now, but they're going to be checking to see if USDA is willing to budge on those South American production estimates. Dow Jones survey expects U.S. wheat production to increase from 1.87 billion bushels to 1.91 billion bushels, and USDA's estimate of new crop ending wheat stocks could be raised from 758 million bushels up to 793 million bushels, the highest it would be in four years if it comes to fruition. On a positive note, there is a chance that USDA will really, uh, raise, that is, that uh, 800 million bushels on the export estimates for U.S. wheat as early shipments are up 20% from a year ago. And as expected by the results of this week's trade, cash cattle markets softened by 2 to $3. Futures, on the other hand, yesterday were able to gain a little bit back on traction after three days of sharp losses. Looking at the local auctions, this week has been riddled with the video sales. However, we did see Mile City Livestock on Tuesday gather excellent prices for those coal cow and coal bulls. That, was a, that story is not expected to change much throughout the summer, of course, with the low inventory levels still being the story. And speaking of reduced inventories helping out markets, sheep buyers in desperate need of sheep this week at Sioux Falls Livestock, coal ewe demand actually jumped back over that dollar per pound price on the high end of trade. And September contracts of all three U.S. wheats were also higher on the futures board yesterday as they were given a partial boost by the lower U.S. dollar after consumer prices in June were reported slightly lower on the month. However, as mentioned earlier, today's WASI report could limit the strength. Well, that's going to do it for Ag Report. I'm here on the Northern Ag Network. I'm Andy Schwab.